What's up everybody, Natalie here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to navigate a conversation with someone who thinks that individuals can't make a difference. I was doing outreach at a Cube of Truth last week, which is an event where you show slaughterhouse footage on TVs and talk to people who stop to watch. And this woman came up to me to talk about the footage and she brought up a few really interesting points. Unfortunately, she walked away before I could really respond to them, so I'm going to do it here. This is not a personal attack on this woman. I'm sure that at points in my life I would have said similar things, but this conversation does highlight a huge problem we have in our society of people not taking responsibility for their own actions while expecting the world to magically fix itself. We have the problem of it's a mass societal issue and it, to really solve the issue, I believe we need to have a substitute that really works. By this point, we had already talked about Beyond, Impossible, and other plant-based meats on the market, and she insisted that nothing would change until lab-grown meat was everywhere, so she would just wait for that. Now, honestly, this is something I used to say before I went vegan. I said, oh, you know, I'll just wait for lab-grown meat. But now I see how flawed that is. You're essentially saying that you will go vegan as soon as no effort or sacrifice is required on your part, which is another way of saying that you don't think it's an urgent issue. I'm here to tell you that it is. Animal agriculture is destroying the planet creating pandemics and forcing trillions of animals into a lifetime of suffering. It needs to stop as quickly as possible and sitting around hoping for lab-grown meat isn't going to change anything. And I am hoping that there will, there will be some sort of legislation or push to help force the cost down so that we can put these businesses out of the market. I find it interesting that she's hoping that these companies will go out of business while continuing to pay to keep them in business. Pro tip, if you want someone to go out of business, don't pay to keep them in business. She's right that we need legislation and subsidies to go toward plant-based farming and away from meat-based farming, but who's going to vote politicians who want to do that into office? In April of this year, a climate report came out that said that we should look at cutting red meat consumption to four pounds per month per person. This was misinterpreted to say that President Biden was going to ban burger sales in the United States, and people freaked out. Here are just a couple of the tweets that came out that day. I thought we lived in a free country. This sounds more communist, the free country. States need to start looking at succession and we need a divorce. Dems can congregate and force themselves to live under oppression. Just because I had to read this, I'm eating veal for dinner as a punishment. Politicians do what's popular. They're not gonna advocate for animal rights until a bigger part of the population demands it. Yeah, we definitely need subsidies and stuff like that, but uh, I also advocate for individual change because if we're just sitting around waiting for corporations to do something, they're never gonna change. I made a mistake here. I should have made this point more clearly because I don't think she totally understood what I was getting at. I should have highlighted some of the institutional changes that advocates have gotten before bringing up corporations. For example, California banned the sale of fur in 2019. Since then, five more states have introduced similar legislations. Now, obviously this is a huge win for animal rights, but it wouldn't have happened without individuals fighting for this for the last few decades. We can't expect these big institutional changes without individuals taking action as well. When public health advocates were fighting the tobacco industry, they encouraged individuals not to smoke while also enacting harsher legislation on tobacco companies and creating smoking laws in public places. If we had never put pressure on individuals to stop smoking, these laws wouldn't have passed and the institutional changes wouldn't have been made. I, I agree. On the other hand, I'm also a teacher and I've noticed that children who, I, I mean, I guess my 25-year-old colleagues who grew up in the school system where there was a lot of pressure for individual change tend to talk about a lot of guilt that they feel that they've been pushed through while the boomers aren't doing anything. From psychologically speaking, it doesn't really do a lot of good only when individuals, the more conscious individuals are acting. I'm not really sure what her point about the boomers is here. It's almost like she's saying that the boomers are better off because they don't have any guilt, 
but do we really want younger generations to be more like the boomers? If she had wanted to have an honest conversation about whether or not guilt creates positive behavior change, I would have definitely engaged with that more. I do think that's a really interesting topic. However, she is clearly using this as a deflection tactic. She wouldn't use this argument in any other context. To go back to the smoking example, no one was claiming that we shouldn't make teenagers feel guilty for smoking. In fact, guilt was one of the main tactics employed. I agreed we need to do both, uh, but I, do you think that absolves individuals from their actions, or is it just like we need both components? So now I'm doubling down on my original question, which is, should individuals be held accountable for their actions within a certain system? Now, this is an interesting one because people often argue against this in the context of veganism, but would not argue against it in different situations because it's logically flawed. For example, if you said that individuals should not be held accountable for their actions within a certain system, then you would say that if someone lives in a racist society, they shouldn't be held accountable for being racist. To use a non-human animal example, I don't think you would say that if someone grew up around dogfighting that they shouldn't be found guilty for participating in it. Okay, so here I've shut down her point against individual change, and instead of arguing with that more, she's going to switch tactics. I think that there are many moral issues going on in society today, and that there are things that are much worse than the slaughter of animals happening around us, and I'm disturbed by all of it. Now, this is just a matter of perspective. For you, yes, there are things worse than the slaughter of animals around us. But for the animals, there's not. There is nothing worse for these animals than the perpetuation and continuation of their slaughter. I don't know how to prioritize all of sure. these things. Yeah, I agree with you. I do. I'm not sure what I was going to agree with here. Probably that there are a lot of issues. As far as deciding what you should prioritize, it's important to look at what you're perpetuating. Are you paying for animals to be harmed so that you can eat a sandwich? I do. I do know that it doesn't help to put too much pressure on individuals in the sense that we have a lot of people with very little power feeling very guilty without able, the ability to do and change much, and the people with a lot of power aren't doing enough. And that we really need to find better ways to put it on the shoulders. So one thing uh, that you said that, okay, well, I'll give you a card. Um, take personal responsibility. You don't have to be part of this anymore. Thank you. So now she's going to walk away. Now, this line of thinking is a little disturbing to me. It's like she wants people at the bottom to have more power, but she's robbing them and herself of individual agency. She is half right here. Governments and corporations do have a greater responsibility than individuals. One study found that just 100 corporations were responsible for 70% of greenhouse gas emissions. But it's important to remember that these corporations are providing products that consumers are buying. We as consumers may not have as much power, but we still have some. And sitting around saying that we can't change anything is a surefire way to not change anything. I also want to mention that going vegan is not the only way to help the animals. You can donate to sanctuaries, animal rights campaigns, or get involved in local politics. There are tons of people without much power who are not paying for animals to be abused. Just because you don't have power doesn't mean you can't be vegan, and it doesn't mean that you can't create positive change in the world. This woman is clearly disturbed by the footage we're showing, yet refuses to acknowledge that she's part of the problem. Why does she expect the world to change when she is not willing to change what she eats for breakfast. If you're watching this and you want to drastically reduce your carbon emissions and live in a world without rampant animal abuse, then stop waiting, do the right thing, and go vegan today.